السلام علیکم جی آیا نو پخیر آگلے نی ہاو چو نشم میں وشملے و ہائی گنزائی میں گوٹن مارگن ہائی ہگز ان ہیلوز اور بری گوڈ خوش آمدی تو ایوی بری ہو تیون ان تو پی ٹی وی ورلڈ اور بری گوڈ خوش آمدی تو ایوی بری ہو تیون ان تو پی ٹی وی ورلڈ اور بری گوڈ خوش آمدی تو ایوی بری ہو تیون ان تو پی ٹی We hope that you guys are doing great. Maha, what about you? How are you today? Assalamualaikum, everyone. Assalamualaikum, Shazad. Um, hello, everyone. I am good today. I just have a teen. I'm about 10 seconds caught off guard. So I was still like in the middle of like just adjusting. But I'm good today. I'm, you know, like, I guess, you know, with as time goes on, you realize that things aren't so bad. The heat is okay. There's yeah. bouts of good weather. Um, no, and that the summer is coming and it's actually yeah. not too bad. I think Allah's on our side uh, mm. because of the fact that, you know, after every two, three days, it's raining and the weather gets a bit of change as well. But ladies and gentlemen, just because of this change, quite a lot of people are getting sick too as well. I mean, yes. I think I'm one of the victims of this weather change because uh, what happens <laughs> yeah because what happens is that you know uh, for example over here people do not even have those basic manners now what happens is usually if somebody's got flu first of all they'll start sneezing right on your face they won't put up hand in fact you're not even you know you're not supposed to put your hand right in front of your mouth you're supposed to put your elbow so that if you shake your hand with somebody at least you're not transmitting those germs to the next person so yeah. this is how majority of the people in pakistan get sick but yeah, let it be it's all right it's time to rise and shine bake and wake this <laughs> is what we need to do so let's get started with the top stories of this yes. hour so Ma, let's get started with you okay let's get started with me and my first line uh, headline is the prime minister uh, nawaz sharif has said that the government is working on multiple options for power generation to provide uninterrupted power supply to consumers. So that would be great. Yeah, obviously we do need yeah. that. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. That is, what <laughs> else Everybody can had say? a poker face right after that. All right, we do need that. No, no, we absolutely do need that. I think it'll be great once we get that. Um, and then the next bit is um, Iranian President uh, Hassan Rouhani has reiterated the country's support, unflinching support and friendship to Pakistan. And it has termed it a trusted brother wow. and has also shown an immense interest to join CPEC. I guess that's one thing with the Iranian um, country as well. I was to feel like, you know, we should all kind of be united. No, that's great. But, you know, since the time that CPEC project has started over here in Pakistan and the zones have been developed, almost every other country in the neighboring places, but Iran has always they, they been do want to be partners with us. But yeah, but Iran has always been there. In the yeah, obviously, well, right? they've always as been there. As far as my history says. Exactly. Says, that's what it is. But, I'm ladies and gentlemen, uh, this news, which is coming your way now, uh, is actually the main topic of our show as well. But we do have other news and we do have a public service message. But let's get started. World Malaria Day is being observed today to provide education and understanding about this disease. And this is what we are doing to make you understand what it is, what causes malaria, and then how can we prevent that. That's what our show is all about. But moving on towards sports, mm -hmm. where West Indies will resume their second innings at 93-4 for four against Pakistan on fifth and final day of the first cricket test match in Jamaica. PTV Sports is telecasting the match live. Pakistan 4 or 7 all out. West Indies trial by 28 runs with 6 wickets remaining. Miss Baulhaq, congratulations for completing 5,000 runs in test cricket. And Yunus Khan and Miss Baulhaq, well, uh, it's their last series as well. So you guys have always done a great job, whether you know, in the page or whether somewhere outside projecting the soft image of Pakistan. Hats off to you guys. And that's really good because I feel like I've heard it on all of the channels that there's positive news coming out about these players. So it's good to see that the country's united on their opinions. Of exactly. The, the Chief Minister Punjab and, you know, other leadership uh, and the other leaders from all across the world actually mm. have been tweeting about Yunus Khan completing his 10,000 runs. Yes. Runs. Okay, so now Shazad has already given you a bit of a uh, taste of what the sh uh, show is going to be about. It's about uh, observing World Malaria Day. So we actually do have a report to share. Yeah, we do have a report to share, but before that, we do have a public service message to share. You but I've, uh, no, no, I didn't forget. I kind of was trying to make sure you forgot <laughs> because I felt like the sneezing and the health one was a good one. Well, I think it is a but good you should one, do the but next I one think too. the water one's nice too. It is, so go for it. You go for it. Oh, okay, I'll do it. Okay, so uh, we said about wasting water last week as well, but we're going to reiterate it because of uh, the linkage with the show as well, but people are wasting a lot of water um, when you, you know, if you have gardeners or if you are into gardening or if you need to wash your cars, please make sure that you turn off the tap, make sure that you're not like just going over excessive because, you know, water is, there is a shortage of water and we should be a bit more. Exactly, that's what it is. And over here in Istanbul, what I have witnessed is that, you know, people, there might be just three or four people within the house. 
and what happens is that they own like six or seven cars and they want their drivers to wash each and every of one of that car as well. Please make sure that the car you'll be driving today is the one your driver washes and that's it. Please do not waste water. Another thing, because mm. it's getting hotter day by day, mm -hmm. please make sure that you do, you do have small, you know, things to put water in for birds as well so that they can come and, you know, if they're thirsty, they can drink water. So that was our public service message. Yes, absolutely. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, we do have a small report about World Malaria Day. It is 25th of April today. World Health Organization is the one which is behind that. And this year's theme is Let's End Malaria for Good. Let's take a look at this report. When you guys will come back, Maha will let you know more about it. Okay, so that was a little, uh, to give you an idea of what was going on and also the keeping it simple. I was just thinking, because, you know, we've done a few shows on it and I guess because I believe we do reading before the show, you think, oh, that's a bit simple. But actually, a lot of people don't know the situation of uh, the cases globally and within Pakistan. And also, just discussing during the report, the figures out there, there are multiple figures so it's really important to get an accurate um number and but these glo global figures which we are going to share yes. with you guys are obviously by the world health organization yes. as well so you know if in case you find them different from what what is on internet so please make sure that you log on to world health organization's page and just confirm it exactly because i think those will be the most accurate that you can get closest to the accurate level but anyway so apparent uh, around 200 and 12 million cases uh, in 2015 were reported. The incidence, have, there's been a decrease, but it's about 21% uh, per year. And also there has, however, there has been a decrease in the amounts of cases from 2010 to 2015. But these are all from the websites as well, so you can get this. Okay, website. that is great. That is a good mm -hmm. news, but I've got a bad news. And that is that globally 495,000 people die of malaria. and. You know, the facts, are, the, the reasons are different. First of all, people do not even get to be diagnosed by malaria. Mm. That's the biggest really? problem over here. And may it be globally or may it be in any other country as well. And I think that's what the problem is in mm. Pakistan too, that people just take a very, you know, they don't take it seriously. I mean, all night long, they do hear these mosquitoes being in our ears and they're like, ah, mm. ah. And, you know, we, we will keep on doing that, but there are no precaution measures being taken. There are no mosquito repellers being used. And I don't think that, you know, mosquito repellers work against malaria. So we're going to ask all of all these things yeah. that people, you know, just kind of for laymen and all these people like us that may not know these things. So, so let's get started. Yes, absolutely. So to discuss this very important subject and discuss this day, we've been joined by Mr. Kutubin um, Kakar, who is a local food, focal food, pers focal person for W. Health Organization on Malaria. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure to be here. Um, besides uh, Mr. Kutbuddin Kakar, we've been joined by Dr. Naseem Akhtar. She is an infectious disease expert. Assalamualaikum. Good Asalaam morning. Asalaam. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Uh, besides Dr. Naseem Akhtar, we've been joined by Dr. Rahan Uppal. He is a general physician, 
Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for coming over. But before we get started with malaria and, mm. you know, what are its causes and how to prevent and whatnot, mm. Mr. Kutbuddin Kakar, I have a question mm. for you. Mm. How many times does it happen that you go somewhere and, you know, people do not pronounce your name correctly. Because <laughs> 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 even, so so even I had to ask him, sir, uh, I mean, is it the right pronunciation? You know what? Cocker? This is the second time he's <laughs> named and shamed me on television. No, no, no. no, no I, this is not for you. This is for me too as well. <laughs> it's, I think, 90% of the yeah. times, you know, I uh, just I'm confronted with this situation. <laughs> I was in England. You know, my director was Dr. Louie, and he was uh, the most difficult part of my interaction with him was that he couldn't spell my name. Okay. Uh, properly, and he was like Kutbuddin, he was uh, uh, pronunciating it like a Kubuddin. And then he said, you know, I don't pronunciate it, how th this name you, you people. I said, you know, it's easier than the Chinese names. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely, no, absolutely, absolutely right. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us today on such an important My day. To be here. Um, so we threw out, out some figures um, of the situation, but if you could just clarify, what is actually the global situation regarding malaria currently? Uh, Actually, our uh, current figures, our achievements, mm -hmm. uh, these are actually based on the baseline of 2000. All right. mm -hmm. uh, the 2000 is, uh, is a point, you know, turning point in malaria control world over, you know, it's the uh, rollback malaria initiative. It was mm -hmm. the starting point uh, in 2001. We based the achievements mm -hmm. and progress monitoring on the 2000 data. At that time, we were having around uh, uh, 1 million deaths world over. And 90% of these deaths were actually in children under five in sub Saharan Africa. 90% uh, from the sub Saharan Africa. The rest, 10% were from Southeast Asia and from uh, Americas. So that was uh, uh, based on that, you know, that then we actually have made a progress and then we measured it. And currently, like from 1 million, we have reduced it to 490,000 exactly. deaths, you know. So that's mm -hmm. almost 60%. Uh, a reduction in the mortality mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of numbers of deaths averted it is 650,000 six, uh, 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 6.2 million mm -hmm. which is 6200,000 deaths from mm, 2000 to 2015 okay so for pakistan you know that uh, uh, currently when we have the uh, last uh, uh, report you know which we have from world uh, malaria report from who mm. Uh, it has reflected the figures of uh, 212 million reported cases of malaria world over. Okay. Okay. So this, these are the confirmatory. Right. Uh, and now the currently, the, what is the situation within Pakistan? Because the figures are there. There's the quite a few figures. So what are the actual current figures? Pakistan uh, is one of the five countries in uh, Eastern Mediterranean region, which is uh, contributing towards 90% of the malaria case load. Right, okay. Right. And uh, in Eastern Mediterranean region, we have 22 countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, majority of the cases are coming from Yemen, from Pakistan, mm -hmm. Somalia, Sudan, and Afghanistan. Right, okay. So Pakistan is actually, unfortunately, is grouped in yeah. the... Uh, and, and, I mean, uh, and, and I want to pick up on this as well. I mean, what's wrong with us? I, because, you know, whenever we talk about... the number, you know, I have to tell, you know, that sure. what is the uh, the size of the problem in exactly, Pakistan. Exactly, this yes, is what so I wanted. So, so what is that? So, the, uh, in 2013, as uh, Mims uh, was discussing with us mm. uh, previously, that it was uh, 1.6 million estimated cases in Pakistan may occur annually. Mm -hmm. But the reported figure in 2001 was 125,000 cases, okay. confirmed cases. But in 2016, we had uh, more than 300,000 cases, which oh is... Oh, my uh, God. So, it has gone so up. So, it's a success story as well by itself, you know, mm. that we were not detecting much cases in 2001. Mm. But now we are detecting more cases. Right. Okay, so but the major, uh, the, the, to measure the burden, you know, either we are, uh, in true sense, we have extended the services, mm -hmm. or there is something wrong on the other hand as well. Okay. So, yeah. that's, uh, that's the, uh, uh, the other uh, side of the story. Mm. Uh, actually, we unfortunately couldn't bring uh, reduction in overall malaria, but we did bring reduction in the most dangerous species mm. of Felsperum. All okay. right, and, and, and we'll talk about all since we are talking about you, you know uh, almost 300,000 cases in 2016 as well. What are the origins of these cases, for example, which areas in Pakistan? A uh, very good question for me because I want to co to actually communicate this to our audience okay. uh, mm. and the uh, mm, uh, who are watching us. Uh, uh, that uh, majority of the uh, cases they are being reported from the bordering regions with Afghanistan and Iran. Okay. okay. And 
for uh, uh, the distribution is actually uh, in FATA mm -hmm. agencies in Balochistan mm -hmm. and then actually down to the uh, even to the bordering districts of Miawali uh, in, in Punjab we have this belt okay. which is the highest endemic uh, region. Okay. We have malaria in Sindh too much, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, not to that level which we have in these bordering parts. Okay, so wonderful. And we'll discuss all the reduction uh, policies and strategies adopted to reduce it. But let's uh, move on uh, to Dr. Rahanapal. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, now, within Pakistan, um, what is happening on ground level? When, uh, you know, are people, the de detection has gone up, we, you know, the figures have increased from 2001. <laughs> but what's happening, what are you seeing happening on ground level right now? regarding malaria and this disease are people treating it are there you know are there is there more awareness what's going on do they even get to know about it yeah yeah in fact uh, initially as dr kutbuddin initially uh, s said that it was not very commonly diagnosed now the the good thing is that it's being diagnosed very commonly in most of the laboratories and on the basis of the clinical ground as well we are able to see that uh, how many cases come to the clinic uh, mm. to the clinician uh, having that uh, malarial episode but having said that it is important to first for the physician to know that uh, which cases are uh, pertaining are having the uh, chances of uh, malaria okay the what do we mean by that what type of cases uh, we have different types of malaria as well yes there are different or types of malaria but first of all it's important to know that the patient is uh, having uh, is, is suffering from malaria mm. uh, there are simple symptoms which a patient presents mm. which can be simple fever like symptoms mm. uh, malaise body pains mm -hmm. and then on the basis of that if the patient is progressive in nature uh, we need to know if it is a common type of malaria or it's complicated type of malaria. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 we'll come to the type of cases as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as the virus, uh, uh, the plasmodium, uh, the basic parasite, uh, which is the main culprit of this infection, mm -hmm. has four types. So okay. we divide the virus, uh, uh, this uh, uh, malarial parasite, into this malarial disease into four categories. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, and this regard, regarding the doctors, um, what is the awareness like? Because have being such a, uh, you know, a bed of um, this disease, are people trained enough? Are, is it, are the hospitals not aware enough? Like, what's happening there? Do the you think? The, like the doctors who are yeah. being, who are treating, do yeah. they have an, do they have enough awareness of how regular and yeah. potentially right. dangerous yeah. the disease is? Awareness is the main pillar in mm. I if we talk about this. So basically, uh, any physician mm. uh, having b very basic battery of uh, symptoms okay. uh, one patient can present with uh, should be able to rule out that the patient is suffering from the, this illness. Okay. So, yeah. so but Dr. Kutbuddin, yeah, uh, now Kutbuddin Kakar sahab was actually saying that, you know, it is a success story that back in the day we weren't really able to even diagnose malaria. Detect, yeah. So this is what Maha is trying to ask that, you know, mm -hmm. that means that the expertise on our, uh, with our doctors, whatever expertise they might have on their hands, they might not even be able to detect malaria. Mm -hmm. Or we might not even have that technological edge where, you know, we get our bloods tested and we yeah. get yeah. to know about it. So basically, yeah. what are the new detection techniques that yeah. have changed yeah. from 2001 to 2011? Is uh, 2017, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, but basically... Okay, yeah, I'll come to you next time. Yes. Basically, uh, uh, there hasn't been much in uh, terms of technological changes. Right. Okay. Uh, it is still the same primary microscopy, okay. which is the basic test mm -hmm. to rule out malaria. Right. So we need to diagnose a patient on the basis of thin and thick slide, okay. which is being taken from the blood sample. Okay. And the technique uh, by the phlebotomist is important. So the phlebotomist has to uh, be sure that it's taken from certain portion of the blood vessel. Okay. Uh, the malarial parasites are in the blood stream, mm. but they are more uh, pronounced in the outer peripheral part of the vein okay. vessel. Mm. So the blood has to be taken from that area, okay. first of all. Mm. And then uh, the slide, that the thin and thick slide has to be seen by the expert doctor right. to see if the, uh, the plasmodium vi uh, vivex, uh, well, we will come to the mm. different types of those uh, uh, parasitic infections, but mm. uh, that's the pivotal area okay. where we need to diagnose. And then the most important thing is that once we are diagnosing the patient, mm. we need to confirm it by three different uh, 
samples right, okay. to uh, make to, to label the patient as malarial uh, or non to malarial. make sure yeah. okay so then uh, let's move on to uh, we'll move on to dr nasim and then we'll come back to you sir um so what's happening now so we we're getting the detection what what's happening at the infectious disease level of it uh, from your expertise yeah this is an important question i would agree with uh, dr rehan that mm -hmm. uh, uh, the diagnosis of malaria is very, very important because mm -hmm. most of the common illnesses, they present with similar features. Okay. Like the patient starts with high grade fever, mm -hmm. chills, and they feel body aches and pains. Mm -hmm. And these symptoms are very much common in other illnesses like, yeah. you know, viral infections, mm -hmm. flu, mm -hmm. and enteric fever, dengue infection, as well as in malaria. Mm -hmm. So it is the duty of physician to recognize whether this patient is suffering from malaria actually mm. or is suffering from something else. Right. So one thing is the history of the patient, from which area this patient is coming. Mm. And another thing is uh, what are the symptoms, how uh, long is the history, mm. uh, what are the initial clinical manifestation and how sick is the patient. All right. okay. You know, so um, the rapid uh, diagnosis is very important in such a case because sometimes patients with malaria are, you know, having simple malaria means uh, since we divide them in two types of cases, whether they are complicated cases or they are complicated cases. So most of the cases uh, which we see are not complicated mm -hmm. and they are caused by simple malarial species as uh, Dr. Kutbuddin has mentioned rightly that Vivex is more common in our part of the world as compared to other species. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Vivex patients, they do present with severe malaria, but okay. falciparum remains the uh, most dreaded, uh, you know, type okay. of malaria. What do we exactly so mean by complicated and not complicated? Complicated cases? means that uh, one thing is uh, the clinical presentation. Okay. The patient uh, would be presenting in uh, some sort of features uh, which are indicating that patient is having high uh, burden of the parasite in the blood. Yes. Like patient might present with altered sensorium. Uh, there might be features of coma. Patients might be having fits, especially younger age All group right. patients. They may present with fits. Yeah. Uh, pregnant female ladies, they can present with severe malaria. Yeah. And, uh, you know, patients might have low blood glucose levels and, uh, you know, they but might be appearing very sick. So basically everyone's no. kind of um, a danger to it, the, the potentially. Okay, so now uh, we just talked about, you know, the techniques of detection is the same, yes. but we saw the increase. So what strategies have we adopted which are so different, which are showing that we've more successfully, you know, yeah. And why do you think we were not able to detect all of these cases back in the day as well? I mean, and why is it a success story now? Actually, uh, as you discussed earlier, uh, I think uh, one of the uh, confusions have to be uh, pointed out that the no doctor in the world can diagnose malaria mm -hmm. with confirmation. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a suspicion, you know, that a doctor based on the presentation of the patient, they mm -hmm. can just suspect. And it is always going to be like that. It, yeah. it is going to. And now WHO oh. does recommend, you know, that no treatment of malaria should be provided to any clinical case. Mm -hmm. It should be confirmed on laboratory. So that's, you know, the number of cases which we are showing nowadays. Right. These are actually the extension of the diagnostic services. Uh, we had the same technology in the past, but we had not that much cover, you know, that we could have captured more cases. All right. mm -hmm. Currently in Pakistan, one of the major problem uh, in the uh, uh, WHO point of view is that, that still we have 4 million mm. cases a year which are just clinically diagnosed and treated, mm. which is totally wrong. Right. And we, we do want to reduce this number of the uh, uh, clinically diagnosed cases mm -hmm. to provide them because we have 5% positivity rate. Mm. So out of 4 million people, only 5% may have malaria, the rest mm. are actually the missed di diagnosis, you know, and mm -hmm. the irrationally provided anti-malarial drugs. Which so what is do they do then? I mean, so how do we figure it out? Uh, we are actually, uh, we have a uh, very um, robust plan of action, which has been implemented since 2004. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, focused mainly on the high endemic regions of uh, Pakistan. Okay. And this is why, you know, you can see, you know, that felsperm has been reduced and mm -hmm. Majority of the cases clinically diagnosed are now coming in the, in the network of the uh, laboratory confirmatory tests. And uh, we have now uh, innovative tool, tool as well, you know, for the peripheral uh, uh, health system where the people cannot have the microscopy. They have now the rapid diagnostic tests. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we are extending this test, you know, to the communities, you know, mm -hmm. using the teachers, using the uh, um, uh, literate persons to be trained just to use. At midnight, no doctor may be available in a village, 
So a person, a teacher who is living in that village uh, may be trained, you know, just how to detect malaria and it's too simple. Uh -huh. So he can provide, you know, the treatment, direct treatment, you know, according to national, national return guidelines in Urdu <laughs> that give this much, you know, to this Excellent. person. You know. So that's, you know, the strategy, you know, we have nowadays. Mm -hmm. And uh, remember, you know, that one point, you know, for us is this is the foundation stone of malaria control today. Mm -hmm. Correct diagnosis, mm -hmm. prompt and effective treatment, and tracking of the, of the patient till that is cleared from the parasites. Right. It's okay. called T3 strategy of WHO. Okay, so now talking about moving on from the T3 strategy, um, Dr. Opal, how as a doctor has do these things assist in um, correct diagnos diagnosis and then, you know, decreasing the number of people? Okay. Uh, on the basis of, as uh, Dr. Qutbuddin uh, suggested, that uh, it was not diagnosed, I would add in th to this line that it was uh, not diagnosed basis on the uh, feature that uh, uh, it was clinically yes. a very different type of scenario that every physician mm. used to treat a patient on the basis of just clinical lines. Mm. Yes. And uh, a rapid diagnostic mm. uh, test is also one of the very reliable tests, but mm. again, the reliability is one question mark. Mm -hmm. okay. It has 90, 91% reliability. So mm. again, uh, it comes to the physician to diagnose the patient on the basis of the clinical <coughs> acumen. Okay, wonderful. And now in regards to misdiagnosis, what are the consequences uh, for the patient um, of being misdiagnosed? Like, so if they don't have malaria, but they're being treated for malaria, what are the, are there any consequences for that? Yeah, and before yeah. we move on to oh. that, there's one more thing that how do we categorize the, you know, complicated cases yeah. and, you know, mm. the ones which are very, very good question. which are not complicated? The, the first thing, very important, is that if, uh, you are having a suspicion that the patient is suffering from malaria, or even if uh, he's not suffering from malaria, giving malarial medicine again is a, uh, a reliable approach. Okay. Right. Because it's, uh, I understand that there becomes a resistance which we'll talk about in the later part of the, this program, mm. but uh, that is a safer approach. Mm -hmm. uh, complicated and uncomplicated. We need to see the patient, uh, in majority of the cases, they are uncomplicated mm -hmm. uh, in Pakistan specifically. Uh, as the name is indicative, uncomplicated will be those cases where there are no complications mm. and they can present with the simple symptoms of malaise, lethargy mm. and initial fever with the cold, which mm. is a cold phase mm. where there's a uh, shivering and then hot phase where mm. there's a high grade fever and then the third phase is sweating, where there's a sweating. So these are the uncomplicated form. Mm. Uh, I think I've got them all. Yeah, I was just thinking yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, those complicated mm. uh, that is something which is very important mm. area and that red flag sign every physician must have a high index of suspicion to rule out for example if a patient comes with high grade fever uh, presenting with blood in the urine mm. vomiting uh, fits as uh, dr akhtar initially mentioned uh, malaria can involve the brain mm. uh, which is known as cerebral malaria and that right. presents in the form of fits has to be treated on emergency line. It's a medical emergency. Mm. Right. So complicated will be three categories. Mm. Have one is that where the malaria goes into the blood vessels and from the blood vessel, it, it goes into the RBC, red blood cells. Okay. Right. It starts replicating within the blood cells mm -hmm. and that replication leads to bursting of those cells. Mm -hmm. And when the number of uh, cells are burst from the bloodstream, uh, the result is the anemia, and okay. anemia can be very pronounced uh, presentation. Mm. That so sounds like a case of leukemia too, man. Uh, <laughs> but leukemia is no. something which gradually, gradually right. uh, mm. presents. In this case, it is the replication starts from 12 hours going to 72 hours. Okay. So uh, a patient can present uh, with an periodic type of fever mm. with all these symptoms, where is uh, high grade fever, anemia, blood in the urine, even joined us because uh, most of the time uh, a, we see a patient coming to the OPD having high grade uh, bilirubin level and we suspect of joined us, but uh, the, uh, on the back side is malaria. Mm. Uh, so okay. that's very important. Th that complicated form of malaria should be treated on emergency okay, lines. Okay, interesting. Okay, and so, uh, sorry, did you, would you like to add something to this? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I agree to him. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> so I thought I, thought I saw you. So it's basically a multi-organ involvement. Okay. Sorry, yes. I, I had to add something here yes, because uh, uh, this is important to highlight that uh, 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 there are specific treatments for d different species of malaria. So right. that, that can't be diagnosed just by <laughs> clinical approach, you know. Mm. 
by clinical approach, you, you, you can just diagnose, you know, that this person may have malaria. Yeah. But yeah. you don't know, you know, which species is the. Yes. So if the treatment is different, you know, for felsparum, we have different treatment. For Vivex, we have different treatment. Okay. And that treatment can't be provided without confirmatory test. We well, just so need to go for a short break. And when we come back, I think that's what we want to talk about. Yeah. We'll talk about different treatments. And how can we basically just be away from those parasites? That I think that's what we need to do in the first place. Because I think if we if we're going to look into the precaution measures, that's 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 going to be great. We won't have to go through all of we're that. We're building pain towards as well. that for sure. Yeah, I think that's what we need yeah. to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going for a short break. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. We're observing World Malaria Day today. Today is 25th of April. My name is Shazad, and with me I have Maha. Let's take a break. Good morning. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The names are still the same. Well, in case you just no, got no, tuned into BTV World, you're watching this Shazad. morning. And today <laughs> we are observing World Malaria Day. And I think Maha needs to ask a question from Dr. Nasim. I, well. I need to ask lots right, of go questions ahead, let's in do life. That because we have got last 10 minutes. Yes, yeah, Shazad, you should, you should keep an eye on that. <laughs> I, okay, anyway, so uh, before the break, we were talking about all the different types. Uh, we've now learned that you can't just be clinically diagnosed. There needs to be a laboratory test. There are, you know, and we are getting better detection, which is wonderful. Uh, but now let's um, ask Dr. Paul, um, in regards to the treatment, we're talking about the treatment first and yeah. then the, uh, the preventative measures. Mm -hmm. um, what do you recommend to your patients when they live in areas which are more prone to such diseases? What would you say mm -hmm. to them to, especially if they're having children, if they're pregnant, what, what's your advice? It, it's, it's a vector-borne disease. Vector-borne diseases are those diseases where there's some uh, intermediate body involved. The yeah. mosquito is the main culprit here. Mm -hmm. So we need to do all those measures, how to avoid from the exposure. Mm -hmm. So first is uh, uh, insecticides, mm -hmm. proper clothing with full sleeve, mm -hmm. and uh, the initial message which you delivered was to conserve water. I would mm -hmm. add on that that even though those stagnant waters are also source of Absolutely. this. Absolutely. So th these are the basic steps we need mm. to opt. Uh, so once a patient has been <coughs> infected by the malaria, mm -hmm. then we need a high index of suspicion mm. by the doctors right. okay. to rule out if the patient is affected with malaria or not. Okay. If the patient is affected, has to be then divided into two categories. Mm. If complicated, different treat uh, treatment. If uncomplicated, treatment line is different. Okay. So that's the basic area uh, I think we as a physician okay. should Okay, interesting. Dr. Nassim, <coughs> any prevention, preventative measures you would recommend? Uh, I think prevention is better than cure, uh, as <laughs> yeah. it is uh, always said. Uh, it's a preventable disease. Our major focus should be on prevention. Okay. And everyone should be aware that the season is 
coming mm. and uh, one should be you know very much uh, cautious about wearing full sleeves mm. and socks especially if they are going uh, at the areas where malaria is more common mm. especially the kids should be protected with the mosquito repellents while they okay. are asleep and uh, so this you is know another thing are you uh, i wanted to ask about mosquito repellent because there's some myths around these things as well that i want to ask but we'll ask that at the end um okay so now in regards to uh so these are the basic preventative measures which i think yeah. a lot of people hopefully should know about but uh, yes i want to add something yeah, yes please i, you were uh, the next I think it will be uh, some of the informations that we have i think we would like to share to the do. tv channel so that the people may learn you know yeah what's the role of the the uh, treatment and prevention you know? mm. Now, this is the foundation sto sto uh, stone in the uh, malaria control today. Mm. Di correct diagnosis and provision of uh, effective treatment. This mm. is the basic, mm. you know, uh, um, pillar of malaria control today. Mm. All right. Clear and as soon as you diagnose a case, you know, uh, after the first symptom appears in the patient, you know. Mm. So there is a role for the people. When they uh, uh, come across, you know, to have those symptoms, they must go to the they should not treat themselves, okay. should not go to the quacks, should go to the directly to the hospital. Okay. As soon as they get the diagnosis, they get the treatment, they are cleared of parasites. Okay. And even you have uh, billions of mosquitoes, this malaria can't be transmitted to others. Okay. So this is the major, you know, uh, uh, the message, you know, that we have to take home that uh, correct diagnosis and treatment, these are the first. The rest are okay, you know, we have mm. to kill mosquitoes, we have to protect <laughs> ourselves through nets. Yeah, exactly. The insecticide treated yes. bed net is the major tool used for the prevention of bites. Okay. Yeah. Another, okay. thing, yes. another thing is the duty of the doctor mm. to identify that which, which species of uh, malaria is this because mm. some of the species they stay in the liver okay. and yeah. they stay for a longer period really? of time. Yes. And yes. the same, mm. same species which is residing in the liver can reinfect the same person. Okay. So it's the duty of the doctor to eradicate mm. that infection, and so for that we have specific treatments now. Very okay, so yeah. now it comes on to the. I guess this is when the four different types of malaria yeah. come into yeah. it. Yeah, luckily in <laughs> Pakistan uh, uh, we are not having the very uh, 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 furious type, the falciparum, mm. uh, but uh, the Webex, which is common in this part of the world, mm. is the one which Doctor uh, uh, Akhtar mentioned, mm. is uh, remain dormant in the liver. Oh, right. And then that has to be treated mm -hmm. because it remains dormant for mm -hmm. years even. Okay. And uh, once the, the immunity is down or due to some factors, it again reappears. So okay. that's very important so to we treat. We quickly have to uh, go okay, about I'm you know treatments because okay. we've so not what left are the much treatments? time. Here. And <coughs> what is yeah. the and also within the treatments? Can you also at the end of it say what is the harm of self treatment? Okay. Like, uh, the, the, uh, the again, uh, the treatment is very simple. Mm. as the diagnosis. Di mm. The diagnosis, as I initially told, is very simple, slight. Mm. Uh, good pathologists can interpret pr properly mm. and a uh, good technique of uh, taking the sample is the key stone, mm. uh, mainly. The treatment is the chloroquine, which is the simple medicine, mm. and it has been used since ages. Okay. Wow. And the over usage of that medicine has led to the resistance. And okay. for those cases in Pakistan, I, I primarily see that most of the patients, they go straight mm. away to the tertiary type of tertiary level medicine, mm. which is basically not suggested to give to all those cases mm. on the very early phase. All so right. we must rely on the very basic medicine on the first line. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the nearby physician, uh, who's dealing with the patient can prescribe those medicines. And for how long do you really have to take that medicine according to the prescription? Yeah, uh, it has to be taken with the loading dose, which is almost four tablet uh, at one time, mm. then followed by six hours, uh, the second two doses. So it's a course. Exactly, 10 t uh, tablets totally in, taken to be in three days. Uh, right. and, okay. and then malaria is out of your body. Most of the time, okay. yes. Okay. And now in regards to uh, just some myths, and then there's one final thing that I would like to ask you before okay. we do wrap up uh, the show for today. Um, mosquito repellents. Now, whenever you read about it, there's a lot of uh, horror stories also now attached with that they're very unhealthy and they're not actually good. So you know, the, the ones that you spray on yeah. or the cream. What is... What is to do with that? Because, you know, you, it, you see a lot of people using them, but you know in the back of your mind you've seen a documentary where the, or a news report that they're very unhealthy for you. Yeah. Is that no, true? No, no. There is nothing uh, that sort of... In fact, there are two type of uh, individuals. Oh, One who okay. always uh, talk about uh, the chemicals. They okay. There's nothing that type of uh, yeah. bad effect on the skin, but okay. generally as it's a... Uh, it's meant to repel the mosquito. Mm. So I, I think okay. there's no harm. 
Yeah. The certain areas can't be exposed, yeah. uh, can't be covered. They remain unexposed. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, like our faces. And yeah. also, right. uh, sorry, one final thing. Is it true that mosquitoes are drawn to a particular blood type? Or, you know, because certain people seem to get bitten more than others. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, some yeah. people say that you know your blood's bitter, or you know, yeah. that's why you know mosquitoes do not <laughs> even bite you. But very quickly. Sorry, sorry, sir. You want to add something? So Pakistan free of malaria in how many years? You know, I was surprised you were asking you know the yeah. questions of prevention from the cl clinicians. <laughs> 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 Everyone has made it into a role. Yeah. First of all, you know these uh, uh, mosquito repellents. There is only one uh, ingredient which WHO recommends. Mm. It is DEET. Okay. The rest, you know, there are many uh, sold in the market. They are not uh, recommended, you know. And the use of this is definitely, it should not be used uh, or to be used in uh, children under five with caution, mm. right. because uh, it is directly absorbed from the skin. Mm. So, what is the uh, the correct method of using it? Just have two drops, you know, and just. Uh, okay. The mother should do this like and just like this, you know that uh, you just like uh, the way your father yes. puts on yeah, perfume. It's actually oh, don't, don't it's not much. the it's not the uh, it's not the lotion itself, but it's the smell of the lotion yeah. which does repel the mosquitoes. Ah, okay. So you have the uh, repulsive uh, smell, you know, for hours. You know that that's sufficient. You know that right. it can be since the. Uh, the vector of malaria, they are biting mainly, you know, at night. It's not like dengue uh, mosquito, mm. which is biting during the daytime. You know, that's the, so this is the problem. You know, the people must sleep under insecticide treated bed net. Mm. And that's the most effective tool. It also repels and it kills the mosquito. Right, okay. So if the family, uh, you know, at least uh, there should be uh, uh, one net per one and a half person. Sir, very quickly, mm. are we going to see Pakistan free of malaria because we're not left with much time? Yes, it's a dream, you know, and we had almost reached in 1969 uh, to that goal. But unfortunately, you may remember you were uh, either born or not, you know. In uh, I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't. I might have But been. I was born. I was <laughs> born. I was born. In 1969, afterwards, we had uh, 1970 war and Pakistan was disintegrated, you know, and that was... Uh, the time, you know, when the achievements had, uh, you know, we couldn't retain those achievements. Okay. And later on, what happened? There is an era of 1973 onwards till 1999, when uh, we had nothing at hand. And malaria again went up, you know, it's uh, the resurgence period, okay. you know, we had the malaria. Now, we are more uh, equipped, more uh, um, in action. and. Uh, Yes, what WHO says, you know, don't rely, you know, on your low endemic status. Go for elimination. Right. Absolutely. Just, uh, and elimination is based, you know, on community-based approaches. Okay. Strengthening of surveillance, that is the, uh, of the disease, you know. Each okay. and every case has to be reported from wherever it is Absolutely. detected. And every patient has, should reach to the diagnosis and treatment center. And that's why that's the, this is the pathway for malaria really? elimination by 2030. Yeah. Dear <laughs> okay, and thank you so much for joining us today. It's been absolutely pleasure, pleasure discussing. To be here. And you know, I feel like next time I've got so much more idea of how, what questions I need to ask. Uh, but now we have to do our fruit of the day. Yes, so and you know, the fruit we have picked up on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason we have picked up on grapefruit is because of the fact that it helps. Yeah. to fight against malaria yes. as well. Yes, so we need to do this very quickly. So it helps to increase your appetite as well. And it is also a remedy for your influenza. Exactly, I think. And then uh, other than that, you know, it prevents acid formation, solves problems of indigestion. And it's good for boosting your immune system. And it is good for a healthy night's sleep. So with that, I think I might not need to have It helps some. against fatigue too. That's part of the malaria. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, we've just said that it helps with malaria, so it's good. Great. So with that, I hope you log on to our Facebook fan page. Which is with the name of World well This Morning. Our Twitter page. World well This Morning without a G. Our Daily Motion and YouTube page. World well This Absolutely Morning, World well This Morning. And the repeat is that? 5 past 11 p.m. And it's no longer, I, f I didn't get to ask this, but it's no longer a poor man's disease. It is everyone's problem. We need to all work together to eradicate exactly. it. Exactly. That's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, look out for yourselves. And please make sure that you guys turn on your fans at night because that is a kind of hindrance for mosquitoes to reach you as well. No, okay. <laughs> exactly, that's what bye it bye is. Bye-bye, everyone. Good morning.